This is an exact replica of the Rosetta Stone. The original had been found in the year 1799 by a French soldier working on the fortifications of the Nile Delta town of Rashid, which the Europeans, in their persistence not to learn Arabic, called Rosetta. It had been part of a, an ancient temple which had been torn down. If we look at it, we see that it clearly represents the same text in three different languages. Up at the top, ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. In the middle, a kind of cursive and later hieroglyphic called demotic. And down at the bottom, the key to the enterprise, Greek. Champollion could, of course, read ancient Greek. He was a superb linguist and discovered that this stone had been inscribed to commemorate the coronation of King Ptolemy V Epiphanes in the spring of the year 196 BC. As we would expect, the Greek text includes many references to King Ptolemy. Here, for example, you can see it. Ptolemeos. Now, in roughly the same positions, but in the hieroglyphic text, are these ovals, or cartouches, as they're called. And if this cartouche really means Ptolemy, then the individual hieroglyphs are unlikely to be pictograms or metaphors. Much more likely, they're letters, or at least syllables. In addition, Champollion had the presence of mind to count up the number of Greek words and the number of individual hieroglyphics in what are presumably equivalent texts. He found that the number of individual hieroglyphs is much larger than the number of Greek words, again implying that the hieroglyphs are mainly letters and syllables. But which hieroglyphs correspond to which letters? Fortunately, Champollion had available to him a kind of second Rosetta Stone, an obelisk which had been excavated at the Temple of Philae and which had inscribed upon it cartouches representing the hieroglyphic equivalent of another Greek name, Cleopatra. 